All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube's Pastor Dow. Hey, listen to me very closely. I've been monitoring uh, this Section 8 thing. And, um, of course, now, I live um, in a predominantly white county, 99, or let me, let me say this, 95% of the people in this county is white. So, therefore, all the people in this county that own Section 8 are white. Um, five percent of Mexican, no, let's say four percent of Mexicans and one percent are black, and you can imagine where that one percent comes from. Yep, the Ministry of Straightway. All right, so now the demographics switch and change footing uh, when you're in a place like this in a rural area. Now, the reason why the Section Eight and all of it disturbs me is because there are not too many people. Well, let me put it this way: there are people that are trying to educate the black community, but the black community is hard-headed as hell. They are haughty, and they don't want to hear instruction and reproofs. You know, the scripture says that instructions and reproofs are a way of life. I, I received, I can't tell you how many accolades or how disciplined and, and, um, and uh, how hard workers we are straightway, but you need to understand this. We don't play games. When it's time to work, it's time to work. Um, you know, I guess the discipline of me being in the military, you know, being there um, and having to lead men, because I promise you, every time that we're on the building, it's like what you people don't see is the correction and the rebuke and the reproof that we still have to do a brothering when we're there. I mean, if you're a shop foreman and you're a leader, you got something in your mind. You got a time frame in your mind that you won't get done, and then you go at it and you get at it. Everybody don't share that same vision as you do. But at the same time, if we don't get done in a certain time, then we leave. We leave. Um, so we have to get everybody to try to get on our sheet of music as much as possible. How does this fit with Section 8? Well, it ties all right back into home building and owning your own land and building your own home. Hopefully doing it not with a selfish attitude, but with um, the security of other Israelites around. And you think about this. You can actually pick and choose who your neighbors are going to be in this world. And the people out there now that have used Section 8 as a crutch to either pay zero uh, mortgage or rent or pay 50%. But, you know, the, 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 you know, the weep and the howl that is going across the land right now is that a lot of these properties are coming under new management, new ownership. And they're figuring out that they can actually get more because that's what business is all about. They can actually get more money by renting to the public at full market value than to actually receive a government voucher from the government and pay a dismal or renter's fee on Section 8. So what is happening? A lot of people are now, I, I, I say it like this, they are volunteering to be homeless. Oh, Pastor Dow, they ain't volunteering to be homeless. Yes, they are too. They're volunteering to be homeless if they're not doing a damn thing to improve their life and always depending on the benevolence and goodness of somebody else to provide that and to be that for them. Period. Sorry, this is a cold, cool, cruel world. And people are not benevolent. You know, think about this. If your natural family who loves you so much, why is it that Whenever you come on hard times, that's the last place that you can go. And even at that, the door ain't even open. If you get a hard weight, you sleep on a couch, you sleep in their basement, nothing like this, man. I, it's just, just a bad spirit. It really is. And most of you will flip over backwards for this natural family and who you think you know. And only relationship you've got with them is that you just know each other because you grew up in the same house. But once you get older, you're going to find out they ain't tolerating you. And they're not fooling with you period. That's natural family for you in a nutshell. So my question to you is this. All of you out there, I don't care who you are, when you'll start changing your mind and start seeing things for what it really truly is. I think the greatest blessing in life is trying to be a benefit to those who will receive the blessing because there's a rebellious spirit inside a man. It really truly is. It has a certain look that takes place. You ever reprove someone or correct someone? You know, all our leaders in the ministry, they have to reprove and correct people. And they don't expect that 
that backlash or nothing like that. Are you following me? But yet and still, it still comes. And there's a certain look. I mean, I, I myself person, I said it once, said it a thousand times. I think it would do everybody in the United States of America well if they went through boot camp, if they went in the military for two years. The reason being is because it helps shapes the mind. You look at Switzerland, everybody in that country, especially male, has to actually be in the military. And when you get out of the military, they give you a gun. It is one of the most secure industrialized nations in the world. One of the most peaceful nations in the world. One of the most disciplined and honoring people in the world. Isn't that something? Switzerland. Is that not amazing? Why don't we adopt that perspective? No, because you know what? We got this attitude. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I tell you, it's a bad, bad thing. I have never, ever, never known a person to not receive instruction and not somewhere along in their life receive a great punishment for it.